Welcome to another adventure with Silent Hunter 5, a World War II U-boat simulation game. I've had my eyes on a British convoy for some time now. Let's take a look at it from the air. When you attack a convoy, you scout for the largest ships as your targets. On the left is one of their Navy's largest battleships. On the right, the biggest prize. An aircraft carrier. A German U-boat can't keep up with fast sailing ships underwater. The only way to overtake a convoy like this is to run at full speed on the surface, out of sight. I've finally gotten ahead of them and about to commit to an attack. A lot of people don't realize the complexity involved in planning an underwater torpedo attack. In the lower left corner is the mini-map. My plan is to turn and drive right down the middle of it and take out two of the larger ships. I'm starting to make my turn now. The individual red squares in the mini-map each represent a ship. We can see them now through my periscope. They're still quite far away. Okay, let's pause the game for a moment. I need to draw a course line from the two leading ships on my map. When you click on a boat, its course, in degrees, is displayed in the upper left. In this case, 267 degrees. Using this compass tool, I can draw a line at precisely that angle using its degree markings. Then I need to position my submarine between these two lines. I'll need to get it precisely in the middle for reasons that will become obvious in a moment. I'm just tweaking up my course. Okay, now it's time to start preparing my torpedo data computer. The executive officer helps you with that. In a convoy, the center ships are the most protected and are always the most valuable. I've previously scanned through them all and found the two biggest ones. An aircraft carrier and a huge battleship. I will only have time to shoot from the bow and I have two black slow torpedoes and two fast red ones ready. The black ones in tubes 2 and 3 leave no bubble trail, so I'll use those on the further target. They'll be undetectable during the long run. I'll shoot the closer target with the faster torpedoes when it's too late for anybody to change their course and speed. Once the enemy detects your sub or torpedoes, all enemy boats change their speed and course. So, any pre-calculations you've done will be wrong. That means you need to be as stealthy as possible when shooting multiple targets like I'm doing here, and have all of your torpedoes impact around the same time.
clicking this icon identifies the target type at right and displays its bow profile at upper left. For maximum damage, you need to set the torpedo depth to strike the very bottom of the hull. That's about as much preparation as you can do before taking your shot. For my final approach, I want to make sure my sub is between those two orange wedges. These indicate the range of their sonar receptors, in other words, their underwater metal detectors. Okay, I'm ready. I'll speed up time now. When I stop my propellers turning, their orange sound detection gets minimized. Okay, here's the critical moment. I'll put back time to normal speed and then check things around through my periscope. There's my aircraft carrier. And there's the battleship. Tracking new target! And if I swing my periscope around to the right, you can see the first wave of destroyers passing by. Final preparation. I've locked my periscope onto the far target, the battleship. The crosshairs show its position in the minimap. I'll speed up time a bit until I'm in the best position. There's my periscope in the middle of the screen, and it's lined up exactly between those two ships, as planned. The aircraft carrier is on the left, and second on the right, the battleship farther back. I'm going to torpedo that one first. Now this is where you need to acquire and enter the last bits of information into your targeting solution. My sub isn't pointed at this target, so the TDC has to figure out how to turn the torpedoes to hit your moving target. By drawing a line from the boat to the sub, you can read its distance in meters. 2200 meters. Let's enter that. Now earlier, I calculated the convoy speed while I was chasing it. They're all doing about 18.5 knots. So let's enter that. Now the next part is optional, but I like to draw a more accurate course line at this point. Again, that's 267 degrees. Then, lastly, you use what they call the protractor to measure an angle between the bow and direction of the ship and the bow of your sub. Okay, that's reading 16 degrees. So let's enter that into the TDC. So now we have a complete firing solution ready, and the TDC has plotted its yellow solution line on the map. I like to draw a circle at that spot for reference. You'll see why this is needed later on. Okay, here we go. I'll unpause the game and fire tubes 2 and 3. Done. 
Let me pause the game and turn off the periscope targeting lock. This will allow me to move the periscope and swing over to the other target. And let me select tube 1 as well so it's ready for firing. Now at this point I want the torpedoes that I've already fired to get closer to their target. Again the torpedoes are headed toward the green circle. As I mentioned earlier, you want their distance to be approximately the same as the distance to your next target so that they'll all strike at about the same time. Okay, that looks about the best I could do. That carrier is coming up quickly. Let's measure the distance. 750 meters. I forgot to turn periscope target tracking on, so let me do that now. That's important because the TDC is tied to where the periscope points. And then I'll draw the course line. And then measure the angle of bow. 23 degrees. Once again, I'll draw a circle where the torpedoes are projected to hit. Okay, here we go. All torpedoes are away. As soon as those torpedoes hit, all the destroyers in that convoy will start hunting me. I'll start my dive to 170 meters right now. The deeper you are, the less effective their sonar becomes. Both torpedoes hit. Excellent. Darn it, I'm in the process of submerging. Looks like I won't get to see this one. Let's go to the mini-map. It's perfect. Let's plot a course away. Get out of here. Because they can hear your propeller noise, I can only use the slowest speed to escape without revealing my position. Silent running. Everybody quiet down. On the external camera, you can see my position indicated in the middle there. I plotted my turn to the right and will exit in that direction. And there I am. I'm going pretty slow. Unfortunately, that was the speed of a German U-boat during World War II. I don't see any destroyers closing in on my position at the moment, which is good. The yellow circle on the mini-map shows where they're listening for me. At the speed I'm going, they can't detect me unless they're right on top of me. Getting deeper now. This part of the game is cat and mouse. If they get too close to me, I have to kill my engine so they don't hear a sound. Oh, 
I'm poised to kill my speed the instant that yellow circle jumps on me. They seem to be moving away, so I've increased my speed a little. Both of these targets look like they're headed for the bottom. Warships carry lots of ordnance, and when that catches fire, it tends to blow the rest of the ship up. That metal scraping sound is the hull cracking. Oh yeah, that's on its way down. I find it fascinating to watch these boats go under. But at the same time, I always have my eye on the mini-map to make sure the destroyers don't move over top of me. This is an aircraft carrier. This thing is huge. Okay, back over to the battleship. In the mini-map, the blue lines represent hydrophone contacts. In other words, microphone directional contacts. My sub can hear boats in those directions, but it doesn't know exactly how far away they are. Let's move a little closer. There's some debris around the wreckage. My torpedoes must have struck toward the rear. That causes the ship to flood from the back 
and the bow can just hang in the air like that for a while. And there it goes. In the meantime, I'm down 170 meters. And looking at the mini-map, looks like I've gotten away.